Well, look who's back to join us again in our pregame uh, preview. It is Chris Duran, the radio voice of the Columbus crew. Chris, we spoke obviously before decision day and said this could be the first of four meetings. Well, one of those meetings is in the books, and it is now the potential for a three-game series in the postseason. Um, a Columbus team which was able to grab a 3-2 win over the weekend at Red Bull Arena. It wouldn't have mattered result for New York because of what Charlotte did Um and a, and a crew team that, I would say this, going into the game showed how good top to bottom their roster is and came out with a really solid first half performance, which I'm sure is the positive side of the talking points for Wilford Nancy this week. Second half, maybe not so much on the flip side. Yeah, it's a really good point. Matt, thanks for having me. I appreciate being on the show. Um in fact, Coach said post game that uh, you know ten or fifteen minutes where Red Bull had their run of things is a really good lesson for the Black and Gold to understand number one that you have to suffer through those moments together, which is something they've been trying to impress upon everybody all season long. But then number two, how do you get out of it? Um, and I think Columbus was able to figure that out. Um, it helps to be able to be in those moments, as you would imagine. When you have a two-goal lead after 15 minutes of play and the opponent, even though they're on their home field, is still trying to figure out how they're going to break down Columbus. But, you know, Red Bulls figured it out and they did it rather directly, which is a part of the style that Columbus expects or anyone expects when they play the Red Bulls. I thought Emil Forsberg was very, very good in the second half. I thought Lewis Morgan really found the gaps where he needed to be. And um, they put Columbus's back line under pressure to the point where they were able to earn that late game penalty kick call from one of the best referees in the league. There's no question about it. You're you're gonna you're gonna get that call, you know, as an attacking team. Chris, when you think of it, I and I would and I don't know how much for Columbus they were thinking about this going into the game and how much they talked about it behind closed doors coming out of the game. We know they have a really deep roster and players can shuffle in and out. But when you look at it, the starting 11 that did not have Steven Marrera, did not have Mo Farsi, did not have Patrick Schulte, did not have Darlington Nagby, and you had options off the bench like a Diego Rossi who came in um, later in the game. Did Columbus look at this as, hey, we're going to make sure that we're fresh going into game number one, but even with a positive result, take those moments out of it. Does this make Wilford Nancy's job even more difficult knowing that he has a lot of pieces that the best 11 might be different from game to game? I, it's an interesting question. I, I think he gains more confidence knowing that Dylan Shambo, who has been on a tear over the last couple of weeks, played very, very well as per usual in place of Sean Zawatsky, who eventually got a few minutes as he's coming back from injury after the Campionis cup rib injury. Uh, you don't have Darlington Nagby in that mix, but you've got AZ Jackson. Um, Alex Matan with a hat trick last week comes in, uh, does a terrific job. These these are the players that he knows he's going to have to rely on when you get into that heavy schedule of, of games over the next several weeks in conditions that are going to vary. I mean, the Red Bulls in Columbus are not going to Dallas to play. Well, Really, no one's actually going to be worried about playing in warm weather until you find Miami. But the point of the matter is, is that um, you got to be able to rely on the depth of the roster. And I think Coach just got a, a bit of validation from that, um, especially with AZ getting the goal early on in that game. And then Yevon Shaburko, who's not a regular starter in MLS games when Marrera is available and Amundsen is, is available too. Shaburko demonstrating exactly what coach Nazi has been asking Steven Marrera to do, and that is penetrate into the attacking third when the moment is right and make yourself dangerous and imbalance that back line. So I, I think there was a lot of validation there. And as per usual, coach Nazi finding the validation in sustaining at least the effort under pressure in those stretches of the game on Saturday night where the Red Bulls really did have some control. Chris, you saw them 34 times during the regular season, plus League's Cup, plus all the extra games they played along the way, the Champions uh, Cup as well. How many times, and not looking for inside information, how many times have you seen Columbus not look like Columbus? And I say that meaning that every time I have watched them, whether in person twice or all during the course of their season, um, the League's Cup run, 
the Champions Cup run, of which some of those games were were enthralling, they always seem to be the same team from a mentality tactical standpoint. So uh, I guess my trick, my 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 question is. How often have they been uncomfortable and had to change what they normally like to do? I think the only the only moment, Doc, was really just a few weeks ago when we had to go down to 10 men and put Sean Zawatsky between the pipes as the goalkeeper because we didn't have a backup keeper. That's where it looked uncomfortable. We could play with 10 men, but once you got into the attacking third and anyone could take a shot and test poor Sean Zawatsky, you know, that's when it looked uncomfortable. Um but playing with 10 men with your starting goalkeeper or even a backup goalkeeper, that, that, that's not, that's not a, a, a rough spot for the black and gold to be in. Um, I think what we saw in 2023 were hints of what Wilfried Nancy wanted to see interspersed with where maybe the team had been. And now more so in 2024, we're seeing exactly where the team needs to be. And we're starting to see hints of where it could be as the evolution of the second year and now drips of the third year part of the plan start to fall into play. So um, other than that one, you know, anomaly against Seattle, I would say we haven't seen much of a departure from where coach wants this team to be. Chris, finish with this one, a Columbus team uh, so good during the course of the regular season now has two wins under their belt against Red Bull early in the season in March, late in the season in October, this um, best of three would set itself up for certainly a contrast of styles. Is it a Columbus team that you feel like would be confident going in to this game? Or is there concern because of the second half that Red Bull was able to put together in moments against the crew last weekend? I think you're going to have moments where the Red Bulls have control of the game. Uh, What that looks like, I think, is going to be probably more of an emphasis on the first line of pressure as Columbus tries to build out of the back. And that is going to make Columbus uncomfortable. Can they get out of that? Of course they can. We've seen them do it. But if they don't, if there is perhaps uh, better execution at that second line where you turn Columbus over at the midfield line, maybe not in their defending third, you may have counterattacks that you have to deal with for a really long span of time. And I think that's where Columbus is going to be tested. And there are going to be stretches of the of the games between these two teams, Doc, where I really feel like, you know, the Red Bulls are going to have earned some possession and have earned some opportunities at goal. Uh, Nico Hagen was tested a lot, especially after the two goal lead on Saturday night. And, and he lived up to it. Um, there may be a moment where he doesn't. And that game is 2-1 going into the locker room. And any team's got hope at 2-1. So uh, I give the Red Bulls a lot of credit for the way they responded to the deficit. Um, And Columbus, the opportunity to to capitalize in the end was was big. Uh, This is going to be a back-and-forth game. I agree with you 100%. How much of the back-and-forth, how much each team has their share of the tug on, on that game, uh, whether it's Tuesday night or again on Sunday in Harrison, I, I think it remains to be seen who's going to come out on top. Chris, appreciate you coming on and, and doing this. I know we've been swapping back and forth between your show and, and our pregame show as well. Um, we'll do it a, again at least one more time, hopefully two. Um, look forward to seeing you in person next week in Ohio. Love talking to you, Doc. Thanks so much and enjoy the broadcast.